Welcome to our study again on the book of Romans. We've moved now from Romans chapter 9 to Romans 10. Paul has been answering the question, why did the Jews reject Jesus as the Messiah? They spent hundreds of years looking for the Messiah and missed it, and the Gentiles who never looked found him by faith. Let me read then from verses 1 of chapter 10. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. He's basically saying they sought righteousness on their own and without knowledge. You can be zealous as they were for things and really believe in something, but it's without knowledge. It's the wrong thing. I have an interesting a story of my own coming from Cape Town when I had a grandchild being born. I left Cape Town and several hours along the road, I went into a little kiosk at a garage in a place called Rufius on End. And um, as I came out, I turned the wrong way. I turned back to Cape Town without realizing I'd done so. Rather than move on to Port Elizabeth, I was now going in the wrong direction. And I went for an hour in the wrong direction until I saw signs that Cape Town's only 100 kilometers away. And finally, I woke up that I was on the wrong road, wrong direction. Friends, you might be zealous for something, but it, and there are various world religions that are zealous and pray many times a day, but they're in the wrong direction. Your faith has got to be based on knowledge. Your righteousness must be based on knowledge. So what? where do we get righteousness? In Romans chapter 1, it says a righteousness has been revealed from heaven. God gives righteousness. Now, if you try and get your own righteousness from obeying the law, you have a problem. And Paul's going to tell us why now. In verse 4, he says, Christ is the end of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses describes it in this way, the righteousness that is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them. Paul quotes from Leviticus 18.5. If you want to follow the law, then you must live by the law. It's no use just reciting the law. And Christ is the end of the law, actually. Christ not only the goal of the law, but he's the end of the law, the whole purpose of the law, the whole Old Testament law, prophets, and psalms pointed to the Christ. And so the Jew, by trying to obey the law and maybe reciting it, was never able to fulfill it. That is not how we are made righteous. That's not how we get right with God. God has revealed a righteousness from heaven by sending his son, his son dying for us and fulfilling all righteousness, and we get his righteousness in this great transfer he takes us and we take his righteousness. So the Jews' religion was not based on knowledge. It was misconstrued and uh, incorrectly understood. Let me carry on. I read from uh, verse 6, But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead? But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your hearts. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. Paul argues that the right way to heaven is by faith, and he quotes Moses. Now Moses, when he gave the law in Deuteronomy 30, 11 to 14, after giving people the commandments, said it's quite simple. You don't have to go to heaven to find the commandments. You don't have to go into the depths to find the commandments. You don't have to go to the uttermost parts of the sea. It's quite simple. It's right here. And Paul, using that same argument, says faith is right here. You don't have to seek God in heaven. You don't have to go into the depths. Jesus has risen from the depths. Faith is right here. It's right close for you to believe. Come to faith. It's for everyone. It's not complicated, is the simple way of explaining what he's just said. But he goes on. He then says in verse 9 that if you confess with your mouth 
Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Basically, there are two elements that make up or enable a man or woman to become a Christian. One is the believing with our heart. We understand the truths of the gospel with our heart, our soul, our emotions are touched, our mind is touched, we understand, and then our will submits to the Lordship of Christ. It's a matter of the heart and the soul. But he says you believe with your heart, but you confess with your mouth. The natural outworking of a man or woman coming to faith is they then acknowledge Jesus as Lord, and they're happy to do it publicly. They're happy to do it before others. Jesus says in Scripture, if you're ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you. Jesus says in Matthew 10, 23, whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. There's no such thing as a secret Christian. If you're unable to acknowledge and profess Christ as Lord with your mouth, it's a probably a sure sign that you haven't come through to faith. Believe in my heart and I now confess him with my mouth. And Paul goes on then and quotes from scripture as he says, the scripture says anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. And he's now quoting from Isaiah from a beautiful passage using the same metaphor of Christ being the cornerstone. Let me read the Isaiah passage for a moment. It's Isaiah 28, 16. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation, and the one who trusts in him will never be ashamed. And so Paul is quoting from the end of that passage, and we understand that same principle. He ended chapter 9 by saying Christ is the stumbling stone on which the Jewish nation stumbled, and here again, quoting from that passage, that Christ is the cornerstone, and we need to believe in Christ. But he then goes on in Romans 10, and I read now from verse 12, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all, and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That statement, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, was what Peter said at Pentecost, which we celebrate in a week's time. Anyone who calls on Christ, anyone who sees his need, that he's a sinner and comes to faith, will be saved. We've, If you followed me in the book of Romans, you've understood this. None righteous, no, not one. The wages of sin is death. We can only approach God by faith. We have our old, ne- old nature inside of us always pulling us away from God. We need the Holy Spirit to draw us back to God into relationship with him. And actually, when we call on his name now, By faith, we will be saved and we will be able then to profess him before others. Friends, maybe it's time for some of you, you who've listened to the series, maybe it's time that God is saying, you need to call on me now. There's a lovely hymn which says, I need you, oh, I need you, every hour I need you. Perhaps it's time to call on Jesus that you may be saved, be forgiven for sin and have eternal life. Come, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we understand we're sinners and we're in need and we come to you today by faith trusting in your righteousness and not our own, and believing, Lord, that you grant us forgiveness. We call sons and daughters the living God. You place your spirit inside of us and you open heaven's gates. We thank you that today we can be called sons and daughters of the living God. Bless us as we now move forward in the new Christian life with you. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.